Our third learning objective is what is the overall goal of financial management? We're going to discuss uh, what should we do when we go into work every day, and that is maximize market value per share of existing stock. And one might think that, uh, especially in the small company, uh, you're trying to make a profit, you're trying to increase sales, you're trying to survive, you're trying to avoid bankruptcy, uh, maintain steady growth, capture market share. These are all admirable goals, but it is not the overall goal. Uh, every day when we went into work at Lycom Technologies, our goal was to maximize current value per share of existing stock. Now, what does that mean? Well, when we started the company, the owner uh, technically got a checkbook out. Uh, he said he's putting all his life savings into this company, and it was $6,000. And I, as CFO, assumed control of that checkbook, and that's all we had to start the business. Our goal every day was to increase the market value per share of existing stocks. So if you remember, the attorney who incorporated us uh, issued authorized 10,000 shares. So our uh, book value per share that day was $0.60, cents. $6,000 of owner's equity. Uh, we hadn't spent a nickel yet. Uh, we had moved in some furniture into our suite, but that was about it. It was our motif was early cardboard box. And basically, uh, we had very little money to work with. We obviously couldn't pay the employees of the company. So we just did what we could do uh, with $6,000. Obviously, we needed to buy a computer. We needed to buy some lab supplies. We needed to start making some fiber optic attenuators, and we needed to start selling. Uh, our goal every day when we walked in, and we work long, long hours, sometimes 12, 14 hours a day. And our goal was to maximize value per share of existing stock. When uh, Lycom Technologies moved to New Jersey, um, the company was worth, at that time, we had increased the market value per share of existing stock, again, only traded internally to $2.50. So my, uh, which is almost quadruple where we started. And so I think we we're a, a great success. Uh, one act that has been passed by Congress recently to avoid uh, some um, excess, excesses by uh, management, corporate management, is the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, also known as Sarbox. Again, here we're, we've developed this act to protect investors from corporate abuse and fraud. Three components, management is responsible for the accuracy of the company's financial statements. Each month, CFO and CEO must sign, again, this is for publicly traded companies, must sign uh, the Sarbanes-Oxley statements that say that these financial statements are true and accurate to the best of our ability under penalty of law. And that means if they're not, some uh, jail time might be in order. If they're, so we must uh, act accordingly and make sure that these financial statements are as true as we can make them. Um, no false statements or material omissions in the financials. And uh, each annual report must have an assessment of the company's internal controls by an outside external auditor. Uh, this is very critical, again, for publicly traded companies. Some companies have decided to avoid this because it's very, very expensive, sometimes in excess of uh, millions of dollars for large companies. And they decide to go dark to avoid this uh, very costly legislation. Again, it was put in to prevent abuses, uh, things like WorldCom, Enron, uh, Tyco, and Adelphia. You've seen some, some of those uh, things you might call corporate abuses, uh, using stockholders' money for non-corporate purposes, and Sarbox was put in place to deter that.